everyone, this is Yulia from the Community Channel for Elastic and today we're going to do episode 3 of Elasticsearch 101. In this episode we'll be going over data. How do we get data into Elasticsearch? How do we explore our data, query it and look at the results? There are a lot of various ways to do this from full technical to using different UI systems and using different programming languages and today we'll, we'll be exploring them all along with the benefits and the drawbacks of each of them. So without further ado, let's get started. When data is added to Elasticsearch, it is put into an index and this is run on a series of nodes and shards and clusters, which if you want to explain a bit better, you can watch episode two over there that goes over the architecture of Elasticsearch. But today we're going to talk about what goes on top of that and how the data is actually put into those indexes so that you can explore it and use it. As I mentioned in the previous episodes, Elastic works with a series of API calls that make requests to the servers and get back information. To see this in its absolute most basic form, we can look at different requests we can do with the JSON bodies that we've seen in the previous episodes. We can do this through the dev tools or through any API interactive system like Postman. This is the most basic way that you can interact with Elastic without any technical frameworks on top of it. You can just put in the document, put in the index that you want to send it into, and then just make a put or post request, and this will add it to the index. However, if you want to do this for a lot of data, it's probably not the most convenient way. So then we can follow up with more advanced ways to do this, such as pipelines, if you still want to continue using the API interface, or when we get into the client languages, most of them have various functions that allow us to do bulk uploads or to run through a list of documents or various files, uh, find them where they're at and add them to Elastic. If you're not technical at all, there's also UI ways to do it, such as the upload function you have in Kibana that literally allows you to go through folders, select the files you wanna add, and with a click of a button and a few settings that you have to set, you can also add that data into Elastic without having to write any code. Similarly, when we're going to talk about exploring your data, you could then use dashboards to drag and drop your, your data and your features around. So there are ways to interact with Elastic without having to be technical. However, most of the techniques that we'll be showing today do have to do with code. Elasticsearch has various language clients for the most used programming languages, such as Java, JavaScript, Python, and many others, as you can see here. The documentation usually shows you ways that you can interact with Elastic as a raw JSON, as well as with the various language formats. Personally, I use Python a lot, so you can select your favorite language and do every operation that we talk about today only in that language, or you can use different languages depending on the type of operation you're dealing with. For example, for more ML tasks, it might make sense to use Python whereas sometimes using the raw JSON and the API requests makes more sense than going to your preferred language. In these first few examples, we've seen how we can upload data that we have locally to Elasticsearch, either through the Kibana UI, using various API tools directly in the console or through your preferred language client to send data to Elastic. However, there are cases where data already exists in a system and we just want to directly integrate to it. For this, we can use Beats, Logstash, or Elastic Agents, each of which has a preferred use case. To start with Beats, Beats are lightweight containers that can be installed on a specific machine, a server, or a source where your data is located or being generated, and they can automatically be collected and brought into Elastic. This can be used together with a Logstash pipeline, which allows us to not only collect the data, but also filter it, alter it, make any changes we want to it, and then send it to the final destination, which in this case would be Elasticsearch. There are various different types of beats depending on the source that we want to install it on, such as metric beats, heartbeats when we want to just get information about the status of a particular system, or there are more complex beats depending on where we want to install it. We can have different integrations with systems that you're already using and generating data on, as well as different locations where your data may be stored, such as different cloud components. So we can have data that is stored into a blob storage or a local installation somewhere else. By simply deploying a configuration file at the source where your Beats is going to be collecting the data from and editing this file to just specify where the data will be found, we can then directly build this link to Elasticsearch that will send data to us live. 
For example, I've installed this Beats on my local device and we'll see that the documents are constantly being generated based on logs that were found in my folders. And if we do a quick sanity check, you will see that my name is there. So these are all files that have been found on my computer. And here we've also seen an implementation of Logstash. This is a pipeline that basically allows any input to be processed with a series of rules, or in this case, we call them filters. And then the final product can be stashed into your preferred location. So in this case, a simple message can be built into a JSON with complex fields and metadata they can then be stashed into my local Elastic installation or the cloud setup. So for example, a simple log line can have its own metadata associated with it sent to Elastic. This is just an example of using Logstash together with Beats, but we can of course set up whatever input and output we want as part of Logstash and allow it to take data from anywhere, make any transformation we want to it, and then put it at our destination, in this case, Elasticsearch. So you can already see, we can kind of play around with how we use Beats, how we use Logstash and how we use them together. And if we create more complex solutions with different integrations, we end up with what we call Elastic Agents. These are pre-built connectors that are specifically built to work with an expected type of data for a particular solution. For example, if we use an open telemetry agent, this is designed to work for an open telemetry sort of application. So we can expect to find a front end, a back end, a server, and various types of functions that we can all monitor and collect data from, process it in a certain way, and create the expected types of dashboards and metrics tracking that we would find interesting. So rather than setting up specific beats and logstash pipelines for each of these, you can simply just deploy an agent in one go since it knows what kind of data to expect for that particular use case. This can save a lot of time, so you don't need to customize a solution and it just exists out of the box. So to summarize, there are many ways to get your data into Elastic, depending on what you want to achieve with your solution. If you simply have a file that you have lying around, it may be easiest to drop it into Kibana and upload it through the user interface. You could set up a script to do this either via an HTTP request sending a document or bulk sending multiple documents into Elastic. You can wrap this into your favorite programming languages, make it part of your existing code solution and have your data sent to Elastic that way. You can install a Beats to monitor a particular source and have that data automatically be sent to Elastic. You can set up a Logstash pipeline to also collect data from whichever source you want, process it and then send it into your cluster where you can deploy an Elastic Agent that takes care of a more complex solution. Whichever way you choose, your data will show up in Elastic and allow you to work and create more interesting solutions from there. Thank you everyone for watching this episode. I hope you learned a lot about getting data into Elastic and exploring it in various ways. In the next episode, we'll talk about querying data. Similarly to getting data into Elastic, there are also a lot of ways you can use to run different searches with different types of queries, aggregations, optimizations, and so on. And we'll show you all those different options as well. Thank you for watching Elasticsearch 101 and we'll catch you in the next episode.